Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, is there... Oh, there he is. Stop. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Thank everyone for joining. <laughs> That's not fair. It's still daylight out there for 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 you and and Adam, uh, who's on oh, also is right. also in Colorado. <laughs> yay! Yay! Well, that's all of us now. Yeah. All right. Well, if you give me two seconds here, I'm gonna uh, kick <laughs> off the roof. I, I have water, Jody. We we don't want me to say anything yeah. on video that, but yeah. <laughs> After we get off the video, I'll have an apple cider. Um, oh, we're here to you. oh thank you. Well, thank you, I <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and this is Jen Farrell and Cranberry Jen. Okay. <laughs> Let's all toast Mary Ann. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Kyle, we need the uh, strawberry Akai, uh, the Starbucks special. I already finished mine for the day. I was going to say, there's no way you're drinking water. <laughs> no, it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm serious. There's got to be a YouTube award for, have you missed a day? <laughs> well, I technically, there is one video for every day since we got Ruby. Um, I have missed publishing on a day and I blame YouTube and we video for their inability to handle 4k video quickly. Not That's my right. ability to edit and get it out there. Um, as you know, I, I miss sleep quite a bit. Uh, especially in the early days, but uh, sometimes uh, missing sleep wouldn't help get it out there any quicker. So, yeah, but there is one video for every day. They're consecutive. They just might have been, there might have been a day gap for publishing. So, yes, thank you. Some yes. of us are just yes. nuts yes. that way. <laughs> well, she's like an iron guy, gal. You know, the <laughs> Iron Man, like the Iron Guy, gal. <laughs> Many of a night, I I'm embarrassed to have gone to bed and the poor thing's been in there editing videos. Yeah, the cat stays up with me, the little black cat. She comes and she sleeps right here and keeps me warm and, and keeps me company while Dawn has either fallen asleep beside me on the couch or in the bed. But yeah, I'm older now too, so <laughs> the staying up is not quite as much as before. So I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to know everybody because Dawn and I know everybody and, and everybody knows Kyle. <laughs> I want everybody, and, yeah, everybody and, and, and Andy and David have been on the channel before, both in video, but I don't think Adam has. So, um, David, why don't you just, you know, name where you are, just brief something for people watching, just make sure everybody knows who everybody is. All right. Uh, David Spector, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm a freelance photographer, filmmaker, and editor. And he built Star Wars Lego. See the new setup behind him on the shelves. <laughs> and he has a customized Model Y. He has a yoke steering wheel. Right. Uh, he's got the, um, what's those uh, wheel covers? Uh, uh, rim trucks. Yeah. Wheel covers with the rim savers on them. Yeah. He, he's got the tilt screen and um a couple of uh, a couple of other things he's he's done some stuff oh he's taking it to i1 tesla next week or uh, here in the next very oh, short amount of time running. yeah to get a racing stripe kyle put across the hood like we had for tesla fest uh uh he's uh uh, uh brian's gonna put that on for him uh, uh his own custom one yeah, yeah uh, brian's really getting into wraps actually i was thinking about bringing my truck over to him to have him wrap this uh over the holidays are you in the rivian right now what are you in yeah in the rivian okay right now, actually at home depot we're building out getting a whole bunch of tools okay <laughs> and so anyway, david wait, when sorry, did you david, get the y i wanted to give you a little bit more credit and uh he also is going to be doing editing david's going to be editing videos for war now is it this now, now you know it's not secret or something he's going to be like starting this week i guess uh, yep yep really cool and when did you get your why a year ago on the 10th yeah i was gonna say that david got his why and right before he got it he started coming to triangle tesla owner events and then has been super active at the events and helping zeb the president of the local owners group out and was in florida at tesla con with don 
And yeah. Cerberus pretty active in the local right. Tesla community. So yeah. And I got a 4680 battery signed by Sandy Munro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he signed yeah. it too. I missed the fact that he yeah, signed nice. it. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm proud to say this hand has shook Elon Musk's hand and Sandy Moreau's hand and <laughs> Kyle Connor's hand. I mean, this is a big, this hand has been places. You can only give me a fist bump, huh? <laughs> uh, Okay, Adam, your turn. We'll 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 supplement you like we did Don if we need to. I mean, like we did David if we need to. Well, I'm in Denver, Colorado. I'm an elevator technician, so I get to work on elevators in the big buildings downtown. I've got a Model X and a Model Y. So, hey. And so, and doesn't your uh, one of your kids goes to school like near where Kyle's office is or something? Yeah, I've got a daughter up at CSU. So, graduating in two weeks. So, wow. Yeah, yep. and, short term, short time. And Adam's yeah. one of the people on my speed message for uh, what? Had did you get the software update yet? Is it behaving for you? What did FSD beta do today that it should or shouldn't have? Uh, and he yeah. is the reason why Jules has Homelink. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's right. So that well, I won't you, curse Adam, Don every time we come home from somewhere. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he saved Don is what he yeah, did there. He perfect. did. We really appreciated yeah. that. Yeah. Oh. Okay, Andy and Jody. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Model X and a Model Y. We've had a Model 3. I'm, we're on our second Model X. The yeah. first one was total on the interstate. We are uh, number, one. number one on the <laughs> Wham Bam test. That's team. right. You number are one. number one. You are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was it was an interesting experience. I think it's right. something to be proud of. Oh, it's hilarious because he's he's gone to he's been supercharging at different places and he starts talking to people and he'll he'll be talking to them and they'll go, wham bam. I'll see yeah. if I can find the link and put it in the video description. So folks that haven't, if there is a Tesla person alive that hasn't seen your accident footage, they can go check it out. Well, I'm glad to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are too, Andy. That was really We're scary. Happy you're alive too. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the wait for your new ex was just excruciating. excruciating. Yes. It happened right when the refresh started, you know, so it, it, it just struck them. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I'll, all's well that turns out well but yeah. uh and we've we're in the solar we got a huge solar system still considered residential um, barely 35 uh kw worth of dc we're limited to 25 export and utility but we do close to 50 megawatt hours a year um uh, well, which is pretty pretty impressive we yeah. got a fabrication welding shop and two homes and an office all tied to it so we pretty well net out all of our power you know, through net metering but uh, we, we kind of zero it all out and we do our business to, we work with hydroelectric power plants uh, i've been in the business 42 years working on dams old hydro plants. so that's uh, it's kind of our story. Yeah. Learned a lot from Andy. It's, it's fascinating, I tell you. Yeah, Adam and has solar too. Yeah. I'd like to have solar. Got, <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> yeah, I've got 13 <laughs> KA on mine and three power walls for the house. Wow. Yeah, Andy, pretty well. <laughs> get your power walls. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I was going to say if we have a, you know, apocalyptic event here i'm somehow i'm, I'm headed to andy's <laughs> i'll see you in the mountains andy because i need to both get away from the city and go somewhere where i can uh take a warm shower that'd be good right get some water and and, and electricity <laughs> not to mention charge the tesla so yeah. and of course everybody knows kyle but uh 
we knew Kyle before Kyle was making videos, right? That's right. I was making we videos, did. and uh, I re I never forget. Kyle said, uh, "God, how do you do it? There's no way." And I this is quote: "There's no way I could ever do a video a day. It's insane, Marianne, basically." And uh, then pretty soon you were making videos weekly, and then it really has expanded. We're very proud of uh, what you've accomplished, and we always look up to you. And uh, yeah. yeah. Really watched it grow well, from the it ground all, up. It all stems from you. You guys are the, I think, a large part of the reason that uh, out of spec became a thing. So, yeah, uh, really, I would say, yeah, uh, yeah, inspiration, very integral part of the roots of our uh, business, which is great. And uh, I'm just thrilled that you're able to get 2,000 episodes up pretty much consecutively is insane. So, uh, yeah, I'm thrilled. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. yeah well, we miss those days yeah. up at the track, Kyle. We do. Those were, those are, those are the, what I call do over days, days where you had so much fun that you wish you could do them all over again. Yeah. That with you. And then the one day we toured the uh, hydroelectric plant with Andy ranks up there as a do over days where you just, it was a bit, it, it meant something that sticks with you uh, over, over time. So, yeah. All right, so I think everybody's introduced enough now, and thank you. You know, uh, it's uh, hopefully works out okay for you guys that you hadn't all met before, but I know y'all are all have things to say about uh, all things EV related and uh, electric car driving and FSD beta and stuff. And I hope that we would just touch on just whatever's fun and whatever comes up today. And I'll try to talk less now and let Don talk more that we've got the introductions out of the way. Yeah, well, I, this shirt that I'm wearing is the first shirt Marianne got me. Okay, this is my first Tesla shirt. I don't know if it's uh, official, but it, it's, it's a collector's item because it says Tesla Motors. It doesn't say Tesla on it because back in the early days, it was Tesla Motors, not Tesla, the official name. And I wore this shirt uh, when I put my reservation in in person at the uh, Tesla what do you call it? Delivery place up in, in um, Kyle gallery Bobby. showroom. Uh, what are we supposed to call it, Kyle? What's that original uh, delivery yeah. center? Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, know it's on it. uh, Westgate Road or something like that. Yeah, Westgate. There's a hole in the wall. Yes. A hole. I mean, literally. You know, you you have those strip malls where there's the the door, the business. You know, in this case, it was Tesla. Then it was like some kind of a plumbing company or something or another, and then that. And they used to get it fussed at because these silly Tesla people would come there and take up the parking places and all that stuff. But this is the shirt that I wore to put the reservation in uh, all those years ago. And that's uh, March 31st, 2016, I think it was. And it was my first first one. And, uh, you know, I, I wear it proudly. Uh, just to say real quick, uh, Kyle, uh, the, I remember the first thing I asked, because he's like, the brain and when it comes to Tesla, I mean, it was everything Tesla. So I remember the, we went uh, right after we picked up Ruby in July, uh, J July, June, June 14th, 14th night, uh, 2017. Yes. Tesla will used to be very active in the little get togethers, right? And Kyle, I met, that's probably the first place I met Kyle was at one of these get togethers. And uh, I asked him, well, how do you, how come the Model X, I can hear the fan running? And he said, well, that's because the air conditioning, because I was out of the car. And he, I said, well, how do you make it not do that? Because <laughs> these are the kind of questions Kyle used to get. And it shows you where I am, uh, how much I've learned. Oh, you turn the air conditioner off. <laughs> So he goes over there and touches the screen. So, hey, you know, um, I was like, oh, oh, well, of course, that's what happens uh, uh, right there. So uh, that's 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 the way it gets. And then, of course, Andy, uh, I remember when he got uh, on, we got these, uh, uh, Marianne, we get these uh, comments and stuff. And somehow he says, we, we went to um, up at um, Sharon Harris Lake and there's a little, I think it's, or is it Lake Jordan? Uh, uh, there's a dam there that Andy put the hydro power in at, at that dam all those years ago. He says, Hey, I did that work. <laughs> and he sent us his webpage on that. I, I remember that very well. And that's, that's how we met Andy. Yeah. 
And of course, Jody, we uh, went tubing with Jody. She, we went up to visit Andy one time. He invited us up, and uh, we were very fortunate. So you went for uh, a float, right, float. Jody? It's a float. float. Yeah, very, very nice float. Yeah, yeah, it's a butt boat. Yeah, butt butt boat. Butt boat, okay. butt boat of fun is what it was. Butt <laughs> boat of fun. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. And then Adam, of course, we've gotten in conversations about these elevators and these, uh, uh, you know, the circuits and all that other stuff that he works on, those humongous motors. I mean, these little little Tesla pumpkin motors, can, you know, that are all lightweight and engineered. And then he goes in there and these motors is like, you know, top of these buildings are huge. It's size of a room. Yeah. yeah. All uh, very similar. It's very similar stuff to the car. Very yeah. Very yeah. You know, we have AC motors, DC motors, you know. Pretty neat stuff. Yeah, and I, you know, that's that's fascinating. We take all this electricity, all these electric motors that's changed the world. I mean, when they, you know, Tesla, that, the namesake of Tesla, right? The polyphase motor. Uh, he's credited with the invention of that, and that that motor has literally changed our world. It, it has made the world, of course, along with electricity. But that that work has made in our world. This we would not be here. We've got. Uh, the heat pump keeping us nice and warm and toasty. The food in my refrigerator is uh, nice and cold. All that's because of that that induction motor. Uh, and it's running every day. It's just there, purrs along. And there's just, I, you know, I remember somebody said, uh, count the number of microchips in your uh, in a typical car nowadays. There's like 50 or 100 microprocessors. And I said, well, you know, what you really ought to be doing is every day count how many motors you interact with that you don't even know is there. And there, there's just gazoobas of them. And that all goes back to basically the work that Tesla did back in the late 19th century. You know? So it's, it's all very fascinating. And, and many of the pioneers, there were a oh, lot yeah. of people. Tesla was certainly a, a showman in, in a lot of ways. And I'm not belittling what he did, but there yeah. were... Oh, a lot yeah. of the people that were very critical to the yeah fair day and what was that other gentleman's name uh you told you put me on to that the little guy uh um, charles prometheus steinmetz yeah uh, you know he he was the first one that actually defined the mathematics around ac power systems uh hysteresis and really put it all together and made it work and uh, uh the true inch the, the phaser diagrams and how to define the alternating current and and build machinery that worked efficiently and really made it practical yeah. and he was a little short immigrant that was uh had polio had had polio and was a cripple and spent spent most of his time in a boat yeah. And he lived in New York. He, he was the mathematician for, for GE. And um, he would float in his boat and work differential calculus equations and stuff. And Yeah, he'd do, he'd do it for fun. Yeah. yeah it Entertainment, cool. not me. Because <laughs> poor Johnny, he, he, has, <laughs> he had to take calculus. Oh, my God. I don't remember I it. I took it, too, I but I don't remember it at all. Don't ask me. Yeah, I when I when I passed differential equations, I said nope, never again. Done, <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I did wasn't trying to, to tie up anything, but I guess one question, uh, or uh, I have said it here, you know, Tesla were the five years that we've owned uh, our electric cars, five and a half years of two thousand episodes. You know, I love Tesla. I'm a Tesla fanboy. Always will. Big Elon fan. I, I don't hide it. But, uh, you know, the early days, Tesla was very encouraging of owners and they were very interactive with us. And, you know, I really miss those days where uh, Tesla would go out of their way. They'd send people uh, to uh, the meetings and, it, and all that stuff. And now it's like uh, you, it's, you can't talk to a person. I mean, uh, you, you go into the web app for service and, you know, it's, you don't know. And so I, I have to say that part. That when Tesla was uh, the early adopter stage or whatever, you know, there's that, that adoption model, whatever phase we were in before, it it, it was really nice. I, I really enjoyed it. And now we're in this 
this new phase, which, you know, is great exponential growth. I'm totally with Tesla uh, adoption of sustainable energy and transportation, totally worthy goals. But the um, but that disconnect where I've lost that personal touch uh, interaction with Tesla, uh, I have to say that's one of the discouraging things that has happened over the period of time. And it's not necessarily that we get that back because the good old that's good old days. But my God, the, uh, and I'm trying to be negative here, but the service, uh, you know, they've, they've got such a challenge now with the, you know, getting service. The growing well, thank pace. God, I, I would hate to have to have this call and they still had the camera problem on Ruby because uh, that would have been a real downer. But it, it, in all honesty, we do believe now it's been a couple of weeks. It's the, the camera problem seems to be working well. So thank you, Tesla, for fixing that. It didn't cost us a cent, but it took how many interactions and, i refuse uh, to go you know, count the actual number it was yeah we don't want to know it's like uh marianne all the time she goes <laughs> shop she says you don't want to know how much that costs and, and i don't want to really count how many times we we had to interact with tesla to get that fixed so uh, that's, fixed. that's one of the things that's happened that's not as positive as we, we uh, would like well call call me an old man which i am but and i do despise texting Period. But text <laughs> through an app with someone at a service center, and it's not immediate. You know, they send you a text, you respond to it, and it may be 30 minutes or two hours before they respond to that. And then you try to respond back to carry on some conversation and get some thought process across. It is totally useless. I just went through it. I had a, I had to take to a service to the Charlotte service center Friday and you know been setting this up for weeks for airbag replacement because mm -hmm. they have this recall on the curtain airbags right. and the newer plaid and um, uh, they finally the day before I'd set this up on a Friday where I could get there at 7 45 in the morning and wait for the repair to be done and they said three and a half hours <laughs> I, the day before, they send me a text, a message, and say that they're going to give me a loan and that, you know, I, they'll have to keep the car over the weekend and that I'll have to bring back the loaner within 24 hours of when the repair's done or I'll be charged for it. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I just gave up. So I show up, I go through it with the guy, and they said, Well, we're just trying to help you out by giving you a loaner. And I'm like, Well, what? What's, can you get the work done? And it, so I decided to stay. They do the airbag replacement, three and a half hours. They were right on the money. Wow. I get in the car, I drive up the road, and the headline falls down and hits me in the head. Oh, <coughs> I'm sorry, Andy. They had not snapped any of it back. There were fingerprints all on the windshield where yeah. they you know, didn't even wipe it down. They used um, to wash our car. <laughs> Yeah, I had to beg the guy not to wash it for fear they would scratch it because I wanted Don to wash it, but they did use to wash it. That's right. Yeah. Well, the, the, the other thing is they crow about checking your air pressure in your tire. You know, that's the big thing with Tesla. Even if it's a, a Ranger service at your home, they want to check your air pressure. So they write that up on the ticket that they checked it and corrected it and they gave me my tire wear. I got in it and drove up the road and I got a low air pressure warning. <laughs> oh, I no. check air pressure, but they wrote it up on the report, you know. So I did, you know, give them a a response back. And when they sent the survey, I was brutally honest. But you know, my point is, it's no big deal for me. I know how to snap mold it back and you know put it back in the, the trim pieces. But not everybody does, and that right. sort of thing is is not. It, eventually, it's going to catch up to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we I can all hope similar, for. Yeah, sorry, you go. I had a similar situation a few months back when I had a twelve volt battery issue. I thought it was just the battery, but it turned out it was some module that controlled the whole front end of the car that needed to be replaced. And uh, they did give me a loaner, which was filthy and low air on tires and everything. Well, I, wait a minute. I always wash the loaner. I always make I him wash the loaner. <laughs> I did wash the loaner because it was so dirty when I picked it up. But anyway, and they said, okay, it'll, you should be ready tomorrow. And I'm like, fine. And I'm like, 
tomorrow. I'm checking the app, checking the app. It's almost the end of the day. All, all of a sudden, it's now moved to the next day. I was like, no communication. So I messaged them. I was like, why, why am I not getting the car back? And they replied like five hours later, oh, we're, we're waiting for a part. It'll be ready the next day. Yeah. Well, next day it came and it wasn't ready yet. And they just don't. And when I picked up the car, I spoke with somebody. I, where was the guys from? St. Louis or something, Marion? Because I know your car was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, we had some from help from the. From, yeah. Yes. We, and we I, got a hold of a. They, they had brought in a service guy from another test location i think it was cincinnati or something and i talked to him and he, you know this is not to i didn't want to turn this into a gripe about tesla thing but um but the guy was very clear and he did share with me he said they have all the, the all those surveys that people mm -hmm. took for the the service center in raleigh they never looked at one of them all the surveys that all the customers saying you know good bad or indifferent and no idea because they didn't know how to look at the surveys. You know, it was, you don't know. And he said, uh, anyway, that was a real shocker to him. He says, no wonder, because uh, they, as far as they concerned, they, I guess they didn't think they had a problem. But they've yeah. now since gotten rid of the service manager up there. And, and so hopefully um, it'll get better. I don't know. I, we I don't no know if got rid is the right term or left because she didn't have enough employees to do the work and couldn't handle. I, I don't, we don't know. Just not there anymore, I think is all I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought she was a little bit on route. And then when I explained to the guy from Cincinnati, I was like, my biggest thing is there's no communication. It takes yeah. a minute to type in a text in the, the box and say, hey, the car's being delayed because we're waiting on this part. This is what we right. found is the problem. We're going to, yeah. we have to, the part will be a day or two. That's all he had to say. I shouldn't have to contact Tesla. To find out what's going on with my car to get every response back. Yeah, and we we never left at the end of the day at IBM unless we called everybody and groveled about how we didn't have enough time today to fix nice. their problem, whether we fixed it or not. We pretty much common service stuff as you like at least ping the customer and tell them you're yeah. sorry, and and promise to direct Dawn the next day to fix whatever their problem was. No, here in Denver, I've had good luck with both of our cars going in. I've even had a ride along with a mechanic. Well, we've had great luck, sure. just not in the last six to nine months. That's when why. when yeah, when that, when that's, mobile that's service showed up in my driveway, every single service experience was awesome, like ten star. Yeah. So this is a recent thing, and. I've not give up hope that they will come around and make it. I don't know that it's ever going to be as good as it was, but I still believe it can be good enough, better, satisfactory. Um, the growing pains here are just really bad. I mean, we, we have the service center in Raleigh that's only 18 months in that location or something. A time oh, flies. And they're too really outgrown it. They need to. Yeah. And it's already, and they they're so work. overgrown there that they can't even find a parking. You know, you show up for service and there's no room to park your car. It scares me to death to even have to leave my Ruby in the parking lot because y'all yeah. know how I am about not wanting to park her anywhere. And. There was one yes, car that got movie. hit in the parking lot by a car hauler. So I, you know, my, my concerns about her being hit up there are not totally unfounded. <laughs> I'm like, you don't I understand. I interacted with the app that my tech has put their phone number so I could call them. Wow. So, we're coming out where you wow. are <laughs> because we're yeah. not. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So, well, let's not talk service the whole time. I I think um, yeah. all of us North yeah. Carolina people, at least, are not having the best experience right now. But yeah, it, it doesn't make me not love my Tesla or not want a Cybertruck. So I guess it can't right. it can't it's not the definitive end all of my satisfaction with Tesla, but it certainly has room for improvement. Well, the other there's two things I'll say about the whole this whole issue is. One, it's not unique to Tesla these days. Every company I deal with, especially if it relates to customer support, uh, product deliveries, communication, it's pervasive throughout this country in particular, you know, and I'll even say probably overseas. But um, the other thing is I think it's a true testament as to how break the car the product is yeah because i think traditionally if the product wasn't as phenomenal as it is 
uh, enough to satisfy us customers, we would put yeah. up with all the other garbage. I, we would have failed a long time ago. Yeah, so, my Tesla is the only car I get giddy to get in and drive every day. Yeah, and Don has a recent service experience on the GMC, and though it was not disastrous, it did take longer. He did have to call for updates. He did stand around for a way too long just trying to pay his bill. Really makes you appreciate the ability in the app to go, yep, I approved that invoice. Yep, my credit card on file, charge it. Because Don had to wait for over 30 minutes so they could carry a piece of paper across the dealership so he could pay for the service. So, that yeah. Really, yeah, that was really weird. Uh, so the other thing, I, I guess, you know, over the time that we've been doing all these videos and I've commented on in the videos and uh, this is where at some level, I'm sure you all have noticed it. I mean, we live in a few wave arena, North Carolina. We are not. Uh, you know, in the uh, highly oh, affluent part, it's not bad. We love it here. But, you know, you used to see one Tesla and we'd go giddy when we see one Tesla. Well, now we were, we went walking this morning and while we were sitting in the uh, parking lot, I said, oh, there went a, a black model on Y. Uh, I mean, we're the number of Teslas that there are now, even in Fuquay, you cannot believe it. I mean, you throw a rock now and hit one. And this is not California. This is rural kind of North Carolina. Uh, it's amazing at it, it, the difference. How about you up in the mountains, Andy? And and I I go to every, almost every time I go to town to do business. I mean, Don and, and Marianne, you know how far out of town we live. Oh, please. I see, I see at least two Teslas. Most of them have North Carolina tags, and occasionally it's an out-of-state tag, heading to Virginia or heading from Virginia or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, it's a daily thing. I do not go to town anymore and not see at least one Tesla. So, I mean, I'm thrilled. We're really out the booth. And I'm still one of those people who waves it all. Oh, I Me too. I even, I even wave at mach -E's and Ionic 5s because there are other EVs on the road. <laughs> So don't yeah, tell me I got yeah, hate for them because it's not true because I wave at those owners too. I have not had them wave back at me, however. So they need to get with the program. When the Model X driver with the cheery face waves at you, you just wave back just because she's a nice person. It doesn't matter if she's driving a Tesla. <laughs> we should have love for one another out there on the road. Yeah. yeah just my one block alone we have besides mine, we got one, two. We got four Teslas. We got a Mach-E. And... Uh... You know, and then I see them on Overland Road. I can I lose count of how many Teslas I see oh, yeah. just while walking the dog on a ten minute walk. It's like, oh, it's a not Tesla that I'm seeing driving. <laughs> and I want to echo what Jody said. It used to be, you know, we'd always we we still wave. Mary and I so even when we're not in the Tesla, we still wave. I'm in the. <laughs> That's the embarrassing waiting, part. Right? We're in the van. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, those are people. But the the thing is, is the number of people who wave back aren't that many and there's just oblivious now it's just like well it's it's just owning a a, a car uh uh it, day in day out i mean it's no big it's no big deal kyle what do you i mean is this are we delusional because we're tesla people or is it what's going on with the ev stuff well, well uh i'm a tesla fanboy no question i own two of them couldn't imagine not having one love them uh, yeah, everywhere. I mean, electric cars, I think here in Colorado, um, I would say we have a large percentage of non-Tesla electric cars here, actually. Yeah. And uh, it's sort of like, oh, the wave is here. We're living it. And so it's everything we've been talking about for the last 10 years uh, is right now, whether it's Tesla or non-Tesla, right. uh, you know, uh, electric transportation is happening. And it's pretty wild. And, you know, I just got back from a trip. I was in Norway for uh, a couple weeks, and uh, if you think you have a lot of electric cars in America, you need to go there because it's sure. just a whole nother level. It's yeah, it's crazy what's going on. Yeah, yeah, you are living the dream with all those trips and the EV driving. Any uh, tidbits here for where you might be headed next? Because I know you're not going to be home for more than a week. Well, maybe through Christmas, but you're. I know you're not going to be home long. <laughs> right. Well, I think just between now and the end of the year, yeah, sort of thinking about what to do. I have to go to LA two separate times. So you'll see some California stuff. 
Um, going back to Norway in January for a huge range test of 40 electric cars. Wow. We've arranged wow. tow trucks everywhere, so we're going to run them all this road. And then the Norwegian government's going to pick up all the cars from tow trucks. It's really cool. Uh, so that'll be a fun video. We're going to be doing uh, perhaps some Middle East stuff. Uh, definitely want to get uh, over to China and do more Chinese EVs this year. I mean, we're really working on a pretty aggressive travel schedule just to cover all the new cars that are coming out. It's like every day there's something new, and it's hard to figure out what people are or aren't interested in. Uh, I'm interested in it all. I just think it's insane. It's so cool. Well, I'm sure you'll be coming down here to VinFast when it opens up in, what, 2025 or something like that? They're going to open that plant here in, in Chatham County. Literally, Literally. we can throw a, a, a baseball six, and hit that plant from six, our house. Six, miles from our house. Because I mean, we're in that part of Wake County that basically is close to Harnett County and close to uh, 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 Chatham. I mean, we're Chatham, right there. Yeah. 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 Well, I know they just shipped a bunch of uh, 900 cars or something over, so that's on the boat now coming over. So yeah, I wonder where they're all going to be dispersed at. But yeah, cautiously I mean, optimistic. Here. That seems a bit. I don't know what to think about Vinfast because everything's so fast. That's in their name. The whole company's just running at warp speed, and yeah. uh, um, we. I don't think we've had any true like real evaluation of the cars yet. So. Right. No one really knows if they're good or bad from a driving standpoint, charging standpoint, livability standpoint. We'll have to see. It'll be really interesting to know if they locked onto our market, know what Americans want, because this is their, this is where they're putting all their money. Um, the the factory is going to be crazy. What about the battery switching out thing? Are they sticking with that, or is that really? Or you mean uh, that they'll so, switch out the battery, you lease the battery, you rent it, or something? Yep, you get a discount on the car, and then you subscribe to the battery, which there's a lot of like weird vehicle ownership laws and regulations in America where that just isn't part of our way of doing things. I don't know if you remember this, Don, but uh, the original smart cars had a battery. That's right. Jack, I got those, bought all those batteries or something other from that. And yep. had them shipped over from Europe. That's right. Yep, and, the, and it kind of didn't work in America because – you would sell someone your car, you have the title to the car, right? So that's your car on your property. If you just stop paying the, the contract, which was in the previous owner's name, well, well, they can't come and take your battery. That's a part of your car. So we there's a lot of issues with that in America. But in Europe, it works really well. Neo does this battery uh, subscribing with a battery swap program as well. Um, and maybe, maybe the VinFast will pull it off. I don't know. A lot of question marks with that. Yeah. Well, the but one I, thing that hasn't progressed very well, in my opinion, again, over the five years we've been doing all these videos, you know, I still totally believe the Internet model that uh, for ordering your car and getting your car, the non-dealer model is the right amount from a cost uh, point of view. You know, there is no business that is ever going to win uh, if it has a middleman in the manufacturer can supply, uh, sell to the end consumer and the other guys has to go through a middleman that the, the middleman's going to kill you, you every time and the thing i've said time and time again the dealer he wants to make as much money on every car as he can get he has zero incentive to uh sell you that price the car one cent cheaper than he can get away with tesla a lot of the manufacturers, they're trying to compete with everybody else. They want to drive the price down, but the dealer says, no, no, supply, man, baby, we're on it. So, you know, this is an advantage that Tesla has got. And, you know, honestly, five years into owning a Tesla, I thought this dealer thing, restriction, limitation, whatever you want to call all these franchise law, I just figured it would be done deal. It had been settled, but... You know, it doesn't get very much press, but it hasn't made really any big progress. The states that let you sell, they can still sell. And the states that won't let you sell, they've come up with the, well, for Tesla, I don't want to call them backroom deals, but uh, what do you call that? Grandfathered in type clauses. And they've gotten in there, but nobody else. And I'm very, I was, and still am a little concerned is that, uh, somebody's going to make a deal to Rivian and says, hey, you could, you know, I've got a great uh, 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 Dodge dealership here. I want to sell, you know, Dodge ain't going to come out with an electric truck anytime soon. Uh, we'll be glad to sell Rivian 
electric pickup trucks or whatever. So, you know, and they'll, they'll lose the impetus. Rivian says, well, we're just going to go the dealer model. You know, we, we're tired of fighting the battle. And, and you know, Lucid, it, who knows what's Lucid, but they could say, well, we're going to give up on the internet model. We're just going to go to the dealer model. You know, we're just going to cave and then it'll just be Tesla running around. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not. That's one of the things that I thought over the five years that we've been doing these videos. Uh, Marianne's been doing. These, I thought we would be talking more about more of these wins. But if I understand it correctly, y please y'all correct me. I I think it's it's basically a stalemate at best. All right. Well, didn't. Did, did you happen to see the uh, Rich Rebuilds video last week? Uh, no, I haven't seen it. No. So so he. He wanted to buy a Rivian. He found one. It was actually in Cary. Uh, oh, the, of course it is. In Cary and North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the guy kept changing the price on him. You know, it was listed on the website. Then when he went to go back, it was listed for ten thousand more. And then you know, he called and everything. He made a road trip down to the dealership to complain because he bought another Rivian that he found closer, I guess. And, but he drove it all the way down to Cary to complain, and the dealers just were like, no. You want to buy the car the same yeah. price, and and that's why if deal if Tesla wins uh, or continues with this, uh, they're always going to be they're going to beat them on the cost model. But you know, I, I just don't know if that's what the outlook is. Kyle, you you got any thoughts? Adam, any any of this stuff? Uh, well, I I guess okay. I think dealers are really silly. There's no need. Tesla's proven there's no need for it. Um, I would say from you know mostly on the service side is probably the most compelling arguments I hear about a dealer. But then I just went to go schedule a service appointment for our sprinter. We have one of these overlanding sprinters and it was yeah. nine months out and the rudest people on the phone. I'm like, this is crazy. Like um, we said. actually have fantastic Tesla service uh, here in Colorado. Couldn't ask for anything better. The best service out of all the cars that we own actually are, uh, is our Tesla service center here locally. Um, but I, I guess I'm really curious. You've had your car five years. Would you say that over those five year period of time, over that period of time, has Ruby improved from the day that you got her? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Hands down. That's not even a real question, is it, Kyle? <laughs> that's how uh, plus positive I am on that. Yes. Right, but that's never happened before. That's such a new thing that cars get better with time. And that's the most exciting thing to me. Yeah, yeah. it is. And, and I would add, Really, are still the feature that we use or we like the best, besides the fact that Ruby's electric, is the self-presenting doors. And still, to my knowledge, nobody else does the self-presenting door. It makes I, I am mind boggled is that our me and I so warped or are so bent in our thinking because. You know, I never liked iTunes. Me and iTunes never got along, but yet <laughs> iTunes conquered the world, and yet it, I never got it. I don't know about these self-presenting doors. Well, Kyle would know you've driven everything. Does anybody else out there have an actuator in the door and, and a touch screen to, uh, or even a fob presenting the car? You would know. Yes, it's happening more and more. BMW i7, Genesis uh, G90, others are coming onto the market. But then, you know, the automakers are pitching it like, look at this cool thing. You can hit this button on the dashboard, the door automatically closes. And I'm like, well, have you driven a Tesla since 2016? They've done it for years. Like, well, well this is new. Right, like they're claiming that they came up with it or implemented it first or something, huh? Yeah. They're, they're, well, you I'm know, from a false claiming, but they're they're sharing it as if it's a new piece of right. you know, excitement. Meanwhile, right. Well, anyone who's been in a Model X has it. Yeah. Well, I was going to say for American Disabilities it. Act, the ability and and I feel like it's useful for me with some of the issues I have being able to hit the brake and the door closes for me. I do not have to wrench my back to lean over and pull in the door. It, it's not just a cool feature or showing off in the model x i mean for me it, it's a real back saving health uh benefit to my life i think tesla missed the market a little bit on not uh advertising it that way and also implementing it in the other other vehicles as a feature because uh you know they figured out how to do it so it can't be too complicated to throw it in a y or an s or a three so um but i think you know uh, one thing that, that I noticed from our, we had a 2018, the one that I was in the wreck with, and the 
the one we have now is 2022. We got it in February. Um, I think it was because of the chip shortage. You know, one of the things that Tesla did is they scrambled and got whatever chips they could and then rewrote a lot of the software to work with the chip that was available. And the doors do not work as well. Even oh. the Falcon doors did. The Falcon Wing doors, some of the updates, I think, have improved it, but the self presenting front doors do not work nearly as well in my 2022, our 2022, uh, <laughs> as they did in the 18. One wow. example is before, if the door was just slightly ajar, you didn't shut it all the way in We're the cold. older car. If you walked away, the door would literally open a little bit and shut. Yep, yep. And you'd hear it. Away. The, the newer ones won't do that. Um, they, they'll just sit there. The door will be slightly ajar. It has to be open about six inches or more to get enough swing to shut. Um, right. Even the closing of the Falcon wing door, I think they finally fixed it on the passenger side. Sometimes it was not coming down to close it properly, but I do think they finally got that. But they there was some stuff lost, and the only thing that made sense to me was because they had to rewrite it for the chip shortage. Uh, wow. We wouldn't for it to, to fail other ones. But. Yeah, well, I, that was one of the things when, look, Miriam wanted the X. I didn't want the X uh, because of those doors, the Falcon Wing doors. He was just, scared of the oh repair God. cost. I just yeah. saw one of those things breaking five thousand dollars just going out the window, you know, right there. But I have got to say, here it is. I don't know how many times thousands of up and on those shows. Marianne loves those shows, right? Flapping the way. And I per I have not even recalibrated. Not once. Recalibrate not once. Not even, Never not been once. recalibrated by us. Nope. No idea how we got so lucky. I, I'm assuming we're lucky because I don't hear Model X people complaining that the the Falcon Wing doors don't work. Uh, you know the the, the rub. Well, uh, now wait a minute. Up. Our 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 friend Richard up in Chicago is currently well, having a Model X Falcon much. Wing door problem, but well, that'll teach him not to show up. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but. Uh, yeah, but but Kyle, you know, you asked me about improvements over time and what other car does that. The chime when the stoplight turns green. Every single day that saves my you know what. I have attention deficit a little bit and I'm running my mouth or I'm trying not to fall asleep because I haven't had enough sleep or I'm looking at picture perspective, something I should take a picture of, or I mean, I just can't stay focused all the time. And the fact that it dings to let me know it's time to move, I would say roughly it's accurate 95% of the time, um, has been an amazing improvement on my driving experience. And we've only had that for like 18 months of the five years. I mean, that's just one example of some, in a way, that the car has improved over time. Um, you know, I remember five years ago, uh, Ruby coming up to the stoplight at Hilltop Needmore and everyone that watches the channel knows where the food lion is. And in the morning, and I've been complaining about some fan and breaking several releases ago or whatever, but literally five years ago, what are you laughing about? Well, it's like, you know, our vid uh, the videos, you know, we're showing all this normal every day. Everybody goes to the grocery store, but but we video our grocery store. Well, but this is just on the way to downtown Raleigh. And oh, well, I, I, five years ago, I was really worried if Ruby was going to back into the semi truck stopped at the stoplight on autopilot. I mean, honestly, the speed with which she would decelerate, how late yeah. she would wait to stop. I was using traffic aware cruise control because, quite frankly, the lane centering wasn't comfortable enough for me to use autopilot all the time. I just, I wasn't comfortable with the lane, even the lane centering. And now I'm like, you know, using the beta that is the, the cameras are working every day for let's say 50% of my hundred miles. Um, oftentimes disengaging because of a navigational issue more so than an autopilot issue. And I'm totally comfortable with the lane centering and I'm mostly comfortable with the stopping. <laughs> I'm more worried about the person behind me than I am about her not stopping for something in front of me. But, but you know, over time that the, the smoothness of the stop uh, with every beta release, it changes a little bit. So you do have to stay alert to that. But 
you know, my driving experience with even, you know, full self driving is not there yet all the way. We're still in the beta, but the autopilot experience, uh, the, the number of um, hours behind the wheel highway and city that I'm using it has vastly improved in the five years in my comfort level. So um, I don't know, Adam, can you think of something I left out that's like an improvement that we've had here on the X that I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm so um, used to using it that I just can't even remember what it is. I, I, I can't think of anything else. Now, the one that comes to mind for me is the new kick open on the Model Y. Right. So it takes the driver's door open. So for us, that works out real well because we have ice. Yeah. You know, and it, it'll lock the handle shut. So Michelle's able to use that to kick her door open now and not have to chip the ice from around the handle. So. Yeah, Don and I did try that for the first time this weekend. Have you, have you yeah. tried it, Andy and Jody? No, uh, you, you have to do it from the app. You can't do it from the screen like on the X. And it really, it only pops it a half a centimeter, a centimeter. So you still have to get your fingers in there to pull the door out. It's not, you know, Model X people look at it and go, that's supposed to be popping the door. But anybody whose door is frozen shut on the handle that uses that feature and it opens and you finish opening it the rest of the way, I think, like you said, Adam, that's going to be really useful and impressive to them. So. It's not Model X popping, but it's something more than nothing. It's, it's I do something. believe it's useful, huh? It, it's something. As far as the X goes, it's just maybe the screen presentation. They keep organizing the screens mostly for the better, so the stuff's easier to use. It it, it presents things better. So the you know the, the screen behind the steering wheel, you know, your main screen, they've optimized that pretty well. The the new display on that or the visuals on that are really good as well yeah and, and that keep climbing on stuff that they've added all you know over, um you know i remember camping mode that uh test test bjorn uh, over in norway used Push to tell for. you how you could get your car so you could get the heat or the air conditioning on well honestly uh you know this is another thing is kind of somewhat unique i guess to, to marianne and, and and even me it's like we use the it's so comfortable you got the climate you know you could sit there and work in your car or or in my case i i just nap but uh you know marianne kills hours a, a day sometimes uh you know because waiting for johnny or or whatever and, you, know, you don't have to sit there running the engine it, it's it's that's one of those things that a gas equivalent car no matter how luxurious it is, it doesn't matter. It can't, well, it can do that, but you're not going to, it's going to cost you some serious change because I think uh, it's it's probably like less than like 15 cents an hour it cost me uh, uh, for us to run the heat or the air conditioner, uh, especially in Jules, it's dirt cheap. Uh, Ruby with the heater is a little bit more expensive, but the air conditioner and that being able to have that option of just, we'll just sit in the car. Oh, hey, you can watch Netflix or YouTube, but we don't tend to, do that. I tend to listen to podcasts, but you know but that's just something that's uh, you d you don't know. Even just yeah, we went to a, a light uh, show last night, and they parked next to a Model Three, and it was all tinted out. But you could see him watching Netflix on the inside, <laughs> sitting out in the parking lot by himself in the car while his family was in Aww. doing the light show. So huh. it is a good way to get out of doing some family things as well. <laughs> Right. Well, I tend to look at it where Don has an infinite amount of patience with me, even going into Guardian Angel, because he just snaps or listens to his podcast. He's just as comfy as can be. It's pretty soundproof in there. And yeah, so I like the husband enhanced patience factor. Is awesome. yeah. that up, you, can, you can get rocking in these cars. So. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, just Wait, today. I can't imagine going back. No, 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 there's no going back. I'll not drive before I'll drive uh, an ice car. You know, yeah. I, I, I thought I would continue. Yeah, just no way. So what were you going to say, you David? Imagine, David, could was, you imagine, Marianne, with all these trips into downtown Raleigh at 630 in the morning, having to stop and put gas in the car so she could get Johnny to school and she's always running literally on the edge. But this, the you know, that's the thing I tell people. You'd be going out at 11 p.m. at night when I realized there wasn't enough gas in the car and you'd be filling it up for me before I left in the morning. <laughs> the number one advantage of an electric car, if you have you have if you have home charging, 
the thing you leave every morning and you've got a full tank. You never have to worry about, oh my God, I have to stop and get gas. And let me tell you, my life, uh, uh, that probably has saved me more going out at night. Because trust me, Marianne, she could get very um, animated talking about these little detours and these little traffic snares up. And if she had to stop and get gas, you know, so I, I, I am very, very thankful. You know, all the years we've only not plugged in like five times. And, and we usually have enough to get, get the trip in, even yeah. though we didn't charge yeah. the night before we could get somewhere. And so it's really not been a hardship, but I could just, I remember going back and, you know, having to go to RTP every day. It's like, and I got an 830 meeting. I was, oh crap, I got to stop to get gas. It's like, no way am I going to be able to make it. Now I have to talk about range anxiety. Oh, I, I got to make it to RTP into the office so because I guess I can gas will be late. If, you, if your plans change at night, you can go on the app and you can change the charge level of your, of your car. Exactly. You only need 60% most of the time. You can bump it up from inside the house and not even need to go out and yeah. touch it. And that's something that I don't ever hear anybody talk about. The fact that you leave every day with full tank and people just don't understand. They always say, how long does it take to charge? Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. So we <laughs> Stop asking me that. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't, doesn't even matter. matter how long it takes on your trip. <laughs> I still need a Tesla bot to remember to plug it in for me after I leave. The that's garage. Andy's. That's what Andy's for, right? <laughs> Except for when <laughs> Andy's traveling. <laughs> but you know, there's one other improvement that's come with with the Tesla. It. it it's always been there, but it has gotten so much better with the increase in the supercharger network and the, the improvements in the navigation. We've done three cross-country trips, and I know, Kyle, you're the, the leader of <laughs> that sort of thing, but we've done all three of those trips with zero planning. We knew where we wanted to be, and we tried all three trips. We, we picked, randomly picked different routes. And with that huge screen, with the constantly being able to recalculate where you need to stop or where the charging opportunities are, it and, and then also having Google Maps with all of the, you know, you see things that you would never know existed that it's like, wow, let's let's go check that out. Yeah, uh, I mean, we fly by the seat of our pants and and let Google Maps decide what stop what we're going to stop and look at. We don't plan at all. And we've and never it's... never had anxiety over it. Just yeah. have wonderful experiences yeah. with that spontaneity of, and and it's just a whole different dimension of road travel that I don't think I've ever experienced in any other auto. Or we would, you wouldn't consider it. Yeah. Oh, I always tell people my bladder will tell me when to stop before the car. <laughs> Yeah, that's for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I think Absolutely. uh I think the uh, and this is not a Tesla problem in any way, but I think uh worrying about a flat tire and Kyle will understand this too is a bigger concern than worrying about range because those flat tires out in the middle of nowhere waiting on the tow truck will really slow your day. But so so me personally, I worry more about a flat than I do ever about range. Um, and I've had uh, one toe experience and uh, one nail uh, lowering down, having to go get it fixed pretty quick. And then I ran over something in the van and took. So I've had at least three tire issues in five years, two in the Tesla, two in Ruby and one in the van. It's way more of a thing than the, um, you know, the people worry about range. I think they're worried about the wrong thing, I guess. Well, uh, after watching enough of Kyle's videos, like when I came back from Ohio a couple of months ago, said I pulled in my driveway, I had two miles left. So, yeah, Mr. 2%. Yes, yeah, Kyle, yeah. Kyle, Mr. 2%, baby. For sure. Uh, yeah, like, you know, I got plenty of way to go, but I know there's a buffer. Yeah. Kyle's taught me that. that so, yeah. Well, in five years, I only had one situation which caused me concern when I was driving without Dawn. And Kyle came to my rescue. Were yeah. you in Colorado then? I think you were in Colorado. Uh, helped me yeah, with Colorado the charge point app and 
talked me through it and kept me calm. And I probably could have got home okay, but I figured I didn't want to risk it. And uh, Kyle was quite instrumental that day in helping me. He, he basically enabled where I was for it to start charging without me having to figure out the app or do anything. And um, so I do think it's a good idea if you uh, get an account, go practice once or twice, just know what you're doing or have a friend that's really handy <laughs> with ChargePoint to bail you out if you need to, so. Uh, we bought the Tesla CCS adapter, uh, uh, CCS to Tesla adapter that came out here recently or was made available. We, we've got one now, but, but I've got to tell you, my hope in, is we never use it. I, I hope it's in the back of the Y, I think is, is where it is. Because you honestly, took it to Florida. Yeah, because we took it. But I hope we never use it. I, I just assume stay on the Tesla supercharger. I don't want to, even if there's other ones, I mean, I'm not against them. But that's that's just, a, a like you said, it's just a, a, a plan B. I, I don't even, you know, I, I have not I've taken only a couple trips. But I just jump in the car and go. I never, I don't even pre-charge or pre-calculate what I leave the garage at. It's just whatever my daily charge was. Uh, that's what I left at because I I know there's a supercharger within 50 miles in any direction I'm going to go. There's going I'm going to hit a supercharger. They're all over. That's the other thing. I remember early days of Marianne. She went all the way down to Wars Warsaw. Yeah, Warsaw, the original Warsaw. The original wolf, the supercharge, that was the nearest Me and Michelle, we went to practice within like a week of ownership just to make sure I knew how to handle the supercharger. So I left you at home and me and Michelle went and we handled it. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But me and Michelle was. The only reason why I would ever stop at Warsaw was to, to sample that supercharger. Never in my life would I have ever stopped there had there not been a supercharger. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, exactly we do right. still we do still stop to charge just because it's new and we haven't been to that one yet. Although Elon never implemented my idea of giving out virtual badges for supercharger stations. Yeah, he should have. I want my I want my Elon. I want my passport stamp. I still haven't given up on that idea of uh, you helping yeah. me keep track of all the neat places that I've been and some because of Ruby. Because like we wouldn't have driven some of those places without Ruby. Or jewels, right. um, you know. Yeah. Uh, one of those CCS chargers as well. My last trip to Idaho from Denver, up around Idaho, Boise's in that Boise area, they've got a supercharger. If you go north of Boise or south of Boise, there's nothing. So I use that charger quite a bit what? at the Walmarts and hitting some other places. And then you start playing the CCS charger roulette because you get there and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. So it is, it's interesting, but it is does come in handy. And there are plenty of places that the superchargers, they're not, they're not, you know, they're not everywhere like they're here in some of these. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. We're spoiled a little bit. That's right. Yeah. So, so I did want to, yeah, be... I was just going to say, I did want to, I, one of the things that we've been chatting off scenes about is the North American charging standard, the stuff that Tessa released. And I was hoping that we would at least touch on it a little bit today. Um, in some capacity, one way or the other, some of the conversations we've been having, you know, Andy, you were really the inspiration for getting everyone together today because you and Don had these great Sunday afternoon conversations. And I really, it's all I can do to not start recording you <laughs> because you guys are saying all these, you know, the stuff sometimes that you would say without knowing you were, you know, without it being a planned conversation or a planned recording are some of the best Tesla tidbits, they, they really are. So, um, but anyway, I always want to throw that out because we're having a great time that we've been on for a while. And before we're not on anymore, I thought we should touch on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did a Twitter. I, I haven't been active on Twitter, but because of Elon on Twitter, <laughs> I've, I've started doing a little bit on Twitter now. And I replied to uh, POTUS's thing about his 500,000 uh, charging stations. And I said, please, Mr. President, just call Elon and do whatever he tells you. I, I, I really, I know I'm a Tesla fanboy. I understand all that. But honestly, that's DCS thing. I don't even know how people in Colorado in the middle of the winter, if because that old version two uh, charge cable, that was plenty stiff when it was cold. 
I can't even imagine what a CCS plug is going to be when it's, you know, zero degrees and you're trying to manipulate. Please, God, let's go to the Tesla uh, North American charging standard. I, I'm hoping they do something with that. I mean, I, I, I can't see. I'm always afraid that's a lot of weight hanging off the A lot of weight. Plug. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes you got to be careful and get your car set right so you're not trying to jerk the plug out. Yeah. But it's the whole system because it's it's clear that Tesla, you know, their inverters, the, the whole layout of the system is robust. The fact that they don't have a touch screen and some kind of UI that you have to deal with, it's plug and play. But the robustness of the entire system, they have, you know, it's so rare you see an inverter fail that, you know, it's out of service. Uh, if it is, it's fixed very quickly. Uh, the plugs are easily changed. You know, they have they have a system that works and it's is they can maintain and the uptime is there. So yeah, it, the fact nothing that, else. The rest of the industry needs to learn from that. And to add to the fact that saying that that if one of the chargers goes down, there's usually eleven or twelve other or more chargers that you can just move a spot and plug into. Unlike Electrify America or EVGO, that there's like one or two. Well, Don, Don had a situation coming around, what city was it, where you were routed to one supercharger and that whole station oh, went down right. and the car routed you to another, it was a big city, so it just routed yeah. you on the loop to the next one, which you had plenty of charge to get to. Yeah. It was so seamless yeah. for you. Um, yeah, so Tesla can even handle down. the whole station being down and get you to another charger in many that, cases. That version three, I was heading to Nashville to that version three supercharger because that's in the Y. But those early days of the version three, they had some hiccups and that one, it, I guess it went offline, I don't know, but it, it rooted me to the other, it popped up a message on the screen said, hey, that supercharger is unavailable, uh, you know, rerouting you to someplace and uh, it was fine, everything worked great. I didn't have to do anything except for click OK, it worked well. Uh, I, I was going to say, Kyle, what's, I mean, you're the guy, I mean, you you drive all these other cars, you you know, you've, you've experienced all of this in droves any thinking uh so many thinking do we have five hours <laughs> well it did uh, do yeah. a video <laughs> on it you did talk about it on video with your dad we watched that you and your dad yeah this right. charging we, standard we haven't done enough content on it that i think if not enough that it deserves at least but the main thing for me is okay first of all the, the connector is so much better than any other connector out there first of all there's no current limitation so you can run as much amperage as you want through there it's temperature defined limitation so that means a lot of cars still 400 volt class of vehicles need high power charging you can dump a ton of current through that's great now will the cable manufacturers end up putting their own current limitations on them we don't know because they've opened the spec i assume the existing cable manufacturers are just going to follow that spec with their own safety precautions so when it's used out in the public, not sure how that's going to be implemented. The second thing, which I think is actually really interesting that I haven't heard many people bring up yet, is NACS actually runs the same communication and protocol as CCS connection, which means there might be some older Teslas, the non-CCS enabled ones, that can't use this cable if it was to be implemented into wide use. They would have to go in for that vehicle wow. retrofit that Tesla talked about next year because it's not using the same communication as the supercharger. So uh -huh. in terms of like reliability, uptime, station activation, payment processing, none of that's going to change. The only thing that will change is the physical act of plugging in a car. But there's no question that it's better than the alternative, which is CCS, which is honestly very clunky for people to get in. And, you know, I, of course, well, right, I'm young. I can plug a connector in. But the more I see elderly people or disabled people going to chargers and trying to use these connectors it's a little bit difficult i don't think it's going to be the big make or break that a lot of uh people are hoping that opening up this connector will be curious your thoughts on, on that my opinion is it, it actually nothing will happen it doesn't mean anything until one automaker uses it and i'm not talking like aptera or one of no, the small ones or yeah. lucid it's got to be a Ford, a GM. It's got to be a Daimler, a BMW, and they're going to be the last. The Germans will be the last ones to adopt this. Um, but if one does it, 
then it's a reality. And then I think it's just a matter of time until we all go on this uh, on this NACS connector. Wow. Good deal. So does that mean then that if I have a Maki, just saying a Maki, uh, um, and Tesla comes out with a an adapter from the North American standard to the CCS uh, combo one, which is the current standard, that that's going to work because they use the same uh, communication protocol. Is that going to be possible? It's just a rewiring of the plug effectively. Is that really what that means? As far as we can tell, and we broke down the actual communication standards on a podcast, which uh, came out just recently on, on the out of spec podcast channel, but we went through like the, I didn't, I forget what exactly it is, but the actual communication line of code that says, hi, I'm this car. Hi, I'm this charger. Here's how much power I want. That's not done using Tesla's communication. That's all done using pretty much identical CCS communication, which actually would be easy for retrofitting Electrify America, EVgo, or other connectors or chargers out there, I should say, because all, all it is is a cable change. You don't need to reprogram anything. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some software in the background. But what I don't know is how our older Tesla is going to handle working on this. And I think that's actually the hidden story here. I think they may not be able to charge in the public unless they go for the CCS upgrade, which – European Model S and X had to do to use CCS, if you guys recall. Those cars had to go in, had to get the, the charge port replaced, then they got an adapter, and now they can use version 3 superchargers there. I think it's going to be the same here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, I, I guess um, I was wondering why, if, it's, if you could take a Mach-E and charge at a, a new North American charging standard, first of all, I don't even know if there's any actual – working North American charging standards out there. The version threes aren't really, but maybe the version four that's the semi might do it. I, I don't know why Tesla didn't announce the here's the adapter. And that always gets me back to something I've never been able to find that I, I swear I read it at some point is that part of the CCS thing is you can't have an adapter. So I, I still wonder why, you can't do that, but, but of course, you kind of pointed out very clearly one time to me, there's a difference between the, where's your line of demarcation for an adapter. The car can have an adapter, but not the charger. In other words, Electrify America could stick a, an adapter on the end of their charging uh, cord, but you as a car owner could drive up with an adapter and stick the, uh, uh, the Electrify America plug in two years. At least that if I understood what you were trying to explain to me, that was a couple of years ago when you, you pointed that out to me, that, that that's the difference. We've, we've seen CCS change as well. The standard is adapting. It's moving. For example, there's been this sort of, I don't know if it was ever in writing. It was actually in writing, but I don't know when we just decided to ignore it. But there was this 500 amp limitation on CCS. That was always the big issue, right? It's you needed the high voltage cars to get the high power charging. Where Tesla, with their little tiny connectors, dumping 680 <laughs> amps all day long. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, but now we're starting to see uh, CCS connectors give 680, 690 amps on 500 amp rated hardware. And that's 500 peak. So very interesting to see what's changing. This is like, it's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I think a lot of companies are experimenting. Um, I think, again, NACS, from my perspective, uh, the implementation, how it's going to work. Will it be a separate plug on the car? Is it going to be USB-A versus USB-C? And you're going to just have both for a little while, like a lot of cars and devices have at the moment. I don't know. But all it takes is one big automaker, and then it becomes a reality. I'm pretty pro NACS, personally, because I like the, the form factor. I think the cables will not be Supercharger V3 thin. I think that they're still going to be just as heavy as the CCS connectors because the same people will still be making those cables to the very over protective, you know, uh, that they have when they code these things. Also, let's not forget charging equipment is really expensive because it can be there. No one's taking the Tesla approach. It's, right. it's like medical equipment. It's, Oh, you, you have to put in chargers. So let me jack the price of the stuff that you got to install. Right. And that really hinders us. Kyle, right. do you have an idea of what you think might be the first car company that would switch over? No, I, I don't think any car company at this time is seriously considering it. 
Like maybe Rivian because they're brand new or Lucid? Nope. They I don't just... think there's, there's no benefit to them at the moment. Actually, if they were to switch, it would hinder everyone because they would immediately have no access to the public networks. Whether or not they would gain access to the supercharger network, Tesla said in their blog, ah, they gain access. Ah. But that still hasn't been figured out yet. So I think it's going to be some time. Wow. Yeah, well, the bit like I commented to you on Twitter, I, I'm pretty comfortable with the speed of the build out right now. Seems to be like somebody opened up, turned on the faucet. Is how frequently we're hearing about new supercharge. I mean, Sanford opened, and Don and I didn't get there today. Most, I would say, mostly because we decided this would be cool for day 2000. But we will get to Sanford here in the next week and film. And now you know, like we're here at the Sanford Supercharger. Even if somebody else already did, we'll we'll film one because we that was that was my top pick for when when they surveyed the Triangle Tesla owners group. Where should uh, you know Zeb was asked by Tesla to survey us for where we thought they should put them in, and he passed on that feedback. And I picked Sanford because. It's a local place without a charger that we go to frequently. It just seemed like a good. And then my second one, I think, was in the middle of the state near Albemarle, near Morro Mountain. There's kind of nothing out there in the middle of that scenic part. And I thought, well, we really need to serve rural communities, too, not just heavily populated cities. And that would be pretty neat if you wanted to go sightseeing in that part of the state to, to have one. Um but yeah, so I kind of lost my thought a little bit because there were so many things I wanted to say all at once. But uh, when back to your POTUS and Mr. President, please just call Elon. It's like, please, if we're going to go, if, if we think that putting a lot more, as opposed to getting people onto the Tesla network, if we feel other charging stations being added out there is really important. And I'll let somebody else figure that out. Can we please like, not just dismiss everything Tesla did and try to reinvent the wheel about how we should implement stations because I know it doesn't work for the positioning on all the cars, but these pedestal slabs where you can drop in four uh, pedestals and you know roll it in on the truck, drop it in with a permit and electrician coming out and maybe some groundwork and poof, there it is. I mean, they're proving now they can put these things in with the proper permitting in what, two, three weeks? Uh, it's they know how to network the permitting now even I mean they 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 crashed and burned on it in the beginning they were short on pedestals for a while they couldn't you know we had places that had it agreed to lease the network but we couldn't but the pedestal there was a shortage of pedestals I mean they've overcome all of these challenges and figured out how to do it so if anybody thinks that they're just gonna like in two months figure out how they're gonna go throw out I don't know even ten thousand around the country. And they're going to do it faster, cheaper, better than Tesla knows how to do it. They're they're crazy. So we got to, I mean, please don't just go, oh, it's Elon or, oh, it's Tesla. We can't do it that way just because. Like, don't be stupid. Like, Tesla knows how to do this. Like you, Don said very succinctly, call Elon and do whatever he tells you to do. I mean, somebody's already figured it out. Let's not reinvent the wheel. We don't, we don't need to reinvent the wheel is really all I'm trying to say. We've got... I don't care what the pedestal looks like. It doesn't have to say Tesla on it. But the fact that they know how to do it so quickly now, uh, just don't just ignore that. Yeah, well, Andy. I, I think that along with what Kyle was saying, that what probably is going to drive one of the other, special, especially major car manufacturers to, to moving to Tesla charging is the fact that once they actually can get production up of their car or their truck in mass and they're able to sell a lot of them one of the biggest hurdles they're facing with that is the charging the supercharging network and right now ea and whatnot are really the only options but if they really get demand up and people are wanting to buy them for it, but they're saying we're you know i need to be able to charge and tesla's has saturated the country as it's already done and continues to do, they're going to be faced with it. We got to, we got to use this because our customers want it. You know, it's, it's sitting there, it's ready to go. We can't, you know, it doesn't matter how much money the government throws at this thing. It's, they're never going to get called up to Tesla. And I think we've seen it in the last 12 to 18 months. Tesla finally figured this out. 
they jack the price up, <laughs> they're charging, they're actually making money now, which is providing a, a revenue stream to incentivize them to even put more chargers in. So I think it's a supply and demand game that's being played and it's going to be sitting there and everybody's going to say, we've got to do this. You know, it's, it's there. Let's, let's use it. So and I think that's what's going on. So Kyle, I tweeted to you and I, and I totally get it. You probably didn't see it. Cause I, uh, when does the EA 10 years run out? We've got to be seven or eight years or maybe, be more into that diesel gate settlement and they're only responsible for the for, for 10 years and they can they can dump it baby they can turn it off and wipe their hands and walk away now with these you know he was there that's a different thing but now it's like god they're you know they're holding their nose over there in volkswagen now so what's going to happen in a year yeah well you know i got to spend quite a bit of time with herbert deese when, when he was head of Volkswagen group and we talked a lot about charging and networks and he went on uh you know road trips with Ionity in Europe and figured out like hey this really sucks and I'm like if you think that sucks please <laughs> come over here <laughs> so you know no question we are relying on a charging company as CCS drivers I own a couple CCS equipped vehicles and I take them on road trips and it's it's there. We've never seen an improvement. It's only gotten worse. First. It's been okay. At first, we had issues where maybe 30% of the chargers would work, but at least there was no one else at the charging stations. So you could plug in, unplug, move around, and it made for a good YouTube video, and it was hilarious. Then it's like, holy crap, everyone's actually buying these cars. You roll up to a station, you're in line, you're last to get up there, and then the dang thing doesn't work, or it's only giving you 30 kilowatts. And it's what do you do at that point? And, you know, from my side, I just really get the impression that, that especially EA, does not care about the consumer experience. And that is because the consumer is not their customer, in a sense. Their customer is the U.S. government to fulfill their obligations. And it's the automakers that they've partnered with to make charging, uh, you know, possibly profitable when they're – you know, big spending spree has to end. They've ripped out chargers, spent a ton of money on reconstruction. Uh, they're really good at spending money. They're really bad at providing a good customer experience. And it's sad that we have to rely on them. What's going to happen when their contract's up? Well, either the automaker partnerships will have enough money coming in the door to keep the network running. And in that case, you actually have a profitable business of charging and maybe even a bit more incentive to make sure that the network's running smoothly um or it's gonna fail and someone will come in and buy it up or honestly the cheapest thing they might be able to do is just shut everything off i don't think they'll do that but it's sadly not the last possible outcome that i could think of didn't you get tweeted by electrify america to stop complaining about them it, it wasn't tweeted uh we had some meetings uh at, at a situation and yeah i mean they basically were like yeah, it was not good. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. I roll up to a station. I tell you what happens. We've given them the best stories on the planet. We That's broke right. the Tesla cannonball record using a Titan a few years ago. That's since been taken over by a Tesla. But we do, you know, I, I'm try to be as realist as possible here. I love the non-Tesla electric cars that are coming out. I really enjoy charging. I love all the new units that are coming and everything and playing around. But when it doesn't work or it's hard to work, that is you know, if one station is down, that's the equivalent of every fuel station in a 70 mile radius just down. It's really a disaster. And I think, you know, I maybe put a little bit more weight on that in, in the YouTube or Twitter space than than most do. They're like, oh, the charger's down. We'll get it to fix it. I'm like, no, this is a major problem. And honestly, it's annoying to them, but it's the only way for. I think consumers to make an educated purchase. If you want an easy road trip experience, you buy a Tesla or a gas car. Uh, and if you want a little bit of an adventure, you you buy a CCS car, and it's the only way to push the networks forward. So that's that's my take on it. I just don't know what's going to happen at the end of their contract, Don. I, I I think there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah. Well, you said that uh, about a year ago when you were here that this is the that at that time. Uh, Maybe it was right after the Tycon when we made, met up there in, in Rock Mountain. This that was the 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 high point of high uh, uh, of EV long distance travel because the chargers were relatively new. You could pretty much 
bet a CCS, one of them would work and there were no other electric cars at it. But once everybody else started uh, having their electric cars show up at the thing, there's no more high, uh, uh, long distance uh, quickly using DC fast chargers because of these charging issues is going to cause a major uh, uh, catastrophe. Like you said, everything's down for 70 miles and I don't have 70 miles worth of range. I mean, I can, I can see that, that you were absolutely right when you said that statement, that that was whatever that was, that probably two years ago, that was the, the epitome of long distance, high speed travel by a non Tesla EV. Yep, I think that's that was you know, we called it the golden age at the time. And I kept yeah. telling everyone this and they're like, Oh no, come on, it's only gonna get better. And I'm like, No, it's only gonna get worse. And the the really sad part about this, the really sad part is Tesla's been manufacturing their own charging equipment since the beginning. Right? Yep. They and look, I early on they had some issues. V three had some issues early on, but there are some still raggedy old, old version two 120 kilowatt stations that are plugging along, and that is because they maintained them properly and they were built to last. There are stations that are brand new, brand new stations going in from every auto uh, charging provider: ChargePoint, EVgo, EA, Green Lots, you name it. Even in Europe, we're seeing this, and chargers are just offline so quickly i mean we really are putting crap in the ground even the new design stuff it just oh. needs to improve so fast there's only two charging companies i can think of on the planet aside from tesla that seem to be making pretty good equipment it's chem power and it's alpitronic and those are the, the only two that i feel oh. are trying to make their units harden and sadly we don't have either in america chem power will come in just a few weeks but no alpitronic yet so Andy, that, that version four is a thousand volts. You said breaking that contact at a thousand volts, the kind of arc you can get out of that. What do you, you got any thoughts about that? Well, I mean, the way the chargers work, you, you don't make break it with, with juice on, you know, the, the, that you, it's got to do the handshake and then the contactor picks up and then the current, the voltage comes on and the current flows. But I do, there are, I think there are some issues with going 800 volts, 1,000 volts, even within the vehicle itself, because, you know, in, in, voltage is pressure. And the way you contain pressure is with in more insulation. Uh, yeah. And it, it's more likely to puncture, to push through, to put it simply. It's like the difference between a garden hose and a pressure washer hose or a hydraulic hose. And you know, these are mobile applications. These are, are, you know, with the charging, there's a charge port and there's a plug, there's a make. What was Jack always used to know? It's a, I guess it's Sandy Monroe always says he's never met a connector he liked. And there's yeah. some truth to that because it's a point of failure. And as the voltage goes up, that, that potential for failure is greater and can be a whole lot more horrific. So, you know, we're, the, the thousand volt architecture that, that Tesla is now talking about in the semi and, and possibly in the, the cyber truck, it's unproven. I mean, I have a lot of faith. Tesla's got a great track record of figuring all this stuff out, making it work. Uh, but the, the potential danger is there. I mean, typically in industrial applications, you rarely see anything more than 600 volts until you get into a, multi, a medium voltage type arrangement. And, the terminations on the connectors are totally different. The way the insulation is dealt with, all of that is a lot more complex uh, and potentially a lot more dangerous. So we'll have to see. Uh, you know, where it comes. Hey, Andy, I was curious. You know, we we watched the Tesla semi event. I'm sure you watched it as well. And um, you know, really, I think impressive numbers, no question. But specifically about the charging, when we look at the V4 slide that they had up, they had a cross section uh, of the V4 cable uh, versus the V3 cable, and they were both scaled to the same size. But are we sure what connector Tesla is using for V4? Because it's not seemingly, in my opinion, NACS. I don't think I'm pretty sure they're going to be using the Charin uh, megawatt, the MCS, the megawatt charging standard which Tesla has had a lot of input in and that consortium is a, I don't know if they were a founding member or a large portion of the membership of 
uh, uh, about Charin. Do you think Cybertruck will not actually have an NACS connector? Do you think that's a, a possibility? You know, I, sure it's a possibility, and I don't know that it makes a lot of sense because then are you going to cripple the Cybertruck from being able to charge it at existing charging superchargers? I even question it with the, the semi because sure, you know, you're going to have terminals that have these megawatt charging setups, but again, I think it's going to really cripple the truck if you can't pull in a semi truck in an emergency or some situation that you couldn't pull into in a, any Tesla supercharger and, and be able to charge. Um, but who knows, you know, they, they're, they've got something in mind. And again, I, I defer that so far they seem to be able to hit, you know, hit the nail on the head, but I, I can't imagine that they're going to, especially with a cyber truck, that they're going to come out with a vehicle that you can't use the existing charging network. Yeah, I agree. I, I, agree. I, I do know that the Tesla Semi that has been, they've been running around between Sparks and uh, 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 Fremont. I saw uh, an article or something. Uh, the person said the truck driver was charging at a supercharger. And he basically had what it amounted to as an extension cord for the supercharger. He literally plugged in a supercharger into the end of this extension cord and plugged the other end into the, the truck. And that's how he could charge it. So, I, you know, as you said, as a bailout, uh, you know, you're, you're stuck somewhere. Uh, it, I wonder if that's, if that's part of their plan. I, obviously, during this development phase, that's you know perfectly fine for Tesla to do, but you know, we get, you know, 50,000 uh, class eight trucks on the road and, and, you know, 50 or a hundred of them uh, are tied up at Tesla superchargers blocking the parking lot where nobody else could charge. <laughs> I could see that being a real, a real political nightmare, uh, disaster basically at that point, PR disaster. So yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, it, this whole I think, thing. I think most of the semis, you know, the product, the volume is going to be low for quite some time, and I think the the niche for them is going to be terminal to terminal, yeah. you know, and they're going to install the charging infrastructure at it. But what Kyle was talking about specifically is they alluded to the fact that this, the cyber truck is yeah. going to have the same type of system. But I think you know certainly feasible that they could put the electronics in it to take a 400 volt charging system and charge a thousand volt system with it. You know, it's it, it's just a, a boost circuitry to, to, to boost the voltage, but it is an electronic widget. It's going to take up room and weight, you know, anything. Well, possible. there's a couple ways to do it, right? You can use an onboard booster like Tycon does, like what you're discussing. You could use the motor's inverter like Ionic 5 EV6 does, which can just dynamically go up. Because the thing I like about that over Tycon, Tycon splits pack voltage in half to charge at a lower voltage charger. So it's really not quite 800 volts when it's dead, right? So you're, you're, you're basically saying 350 volts at as many as much current as the charger can give you. The Ionic 5 EV6 system goes, here's the maximum voltage of the charger, now give me all the current. So it can really get a lot more charging power. And what's interesting is GM with their Ultium, their double stack, they run in a parallel to series switch configuration to then double the pack voltage to charge at higher um, uh, uh, higher voltage chargers for higher power, of course. But when they run in their drive state, the rest of the electronic components in the car can't handle uh, 800 volts. It's all 400 volt motors uh, and everything uh, like this. So they drop down. But when they plug into a 400 volt maximum charger, the pack just doesn't switch. It just stays in parallel. So it's there's so many ways to do it. I don't know what Tesla is going to choose. I really hope they choose the inverter integration uh, method of some kind because then there's no extra components and you can step up the voltage infinitely. And well, that's certainly I, what you would expect out of Tesla. You know? Right. <laughs> well, well I guess two thoughts. Uh, the first is that concept of using the motor and the inverter to step up the voltage is exactly what my old S10 pickup truck Use it. Use the motor as 
the secondary of the transformer or somehow or another, even then that's 1994 technology. That was the EV one dolphin controller from Hughes. That's it actually did that type of, uh, voltage conversion of course it wasn't a thousand volts it was basically 300 alexa stop volt pack. Uh, but so that's one thing and and the uh, the other part that i was going to point out is the lost my brain never mind i'll think of it i'm so sorry <laughs> old age <laughs> oh anyway i'm sorry i i, I really did uh, have one point two points but the, the that technology Well, this is what I have to look forward to when I get a little bit. I guess. Yes, thank you. Uh, I've got. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was with the it was with the eight, the eight hundred volts and uh, all that. Uh, oh, at what point does the um, you know every if you go look at electro oh uh, electronic electrical components like contactors uh, they're always rated at six hundred volts. That's the, that's the first step is 600 volts or maybe it's it's 400 volts or something along that lines uh but then the 600 is another if you look at a lot of things are rated at 600 volts and then the next thing is a thousand volts and that gets back to andy's comment about the pressure you know it's like to get the inside the car uh all those components if they're going to run an 800 or a thousand volt pack unless they do so i didn't realize the gm thing was splitting like that uh uh, you know, the, the cost of those components are going to go up because to get a thousand volt rated, it, it costs more money than a 600 volt rated component, well, which is what they use in the 400 volt stuff. It does. And it, they're, they're, it's a balance act because, yeah, you, 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 your connectors are more expensive. The insulation is greater, but the conductors can be smaller for the yeah. same amount of power. So, and, you know, if you play that game, but the, to me, the thing that's always amazed me is it all fall a lot of this falls back to the national electric code you know which is developed through the national fire Pre prevention association which writes the nec the nec which is all the electrical code and typically what people interface with it is limited to 600 volts you know cables wires connectors plugs you don't typically see that sort of thing above 600 volts here comes the automobile industry and they're pushing what way above that. Uh, you know, it's almost like a disconnect. And I know that things are regulated differently. I even question the fact that people working on these, even even a Tesla at 400 volts, there's not a lot of things addressed with, uh, you see Sandy Monroe and his guys, and they're all wearing PPE and gloves and, you know, art flash equipment, but you know, all these guys working in garages and stuff, working on EVs, they're not doing, it. um, you know, you're waiting to see a lot of potential OSHA problems, but then what about the consumer that's sitting there, like you were saying, plugging in just because there's handshake that doesn't turn on the juice until it's connected. What happens if something cuts the cable? while it's running now they've obviously got some great ground fault and phase things happen really quickly but as you push this voltage high, higher the potential of somebody getting hurt or something catastrophic happening and you know hopefully they're all on top of that but it does make you wonder yeah wait all right it's early days i think we're going to see a lot of this play out over time and sorry for some of the background noise here but I think um, you know the, the 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 decision on what voltage to run. The main benefit, just so your audience really gets it, is charging speed. Yes, there are some efficiency benefits, but very minor, especially when we're talking Cybertruck, which is not going to be an efficient vehicle anyway. Um, yeah, and maybe since we're talking Tesla and stuff too, I'm curious your opinion on this uh, Plaid drivetrain for the acceleration drive unit on the semi, but yeah. then clutch disconnect. Oh, oh I couldn't believe why, that. Why, why, first of all, aren't you trying to a eliminate, uh, complexity in a vehicle and B okay. Your flux related losses from a permanent magnet motor on such a big vehicle aren't going to be, I mean, we're talking one or two kilowatts from that drive unit. Yeah. There's some gear train loss, but like just leave the thing connected. What's going on? 
Yeah, I, I don't know, but I did hear Don grumble over there about, and why did they do that? So if you were hoping for that response from him, I think you're going to get it. But I, when yeah. He, when they did that clutch, I liked it. I liked the. I said, I cannot believe their memory is so short that two speed transmission and just, just that simple change in the original roadster caused them all that grief. I don't know how in the world they think the kind of torque. I mean, one thing of the they couldn't make a transmission stand up to a little four thousand pound uh, roadster. How on God's green earth? And this and this clutch is going to be involved in the acceleration of eighty two thousand pounds. God, I'm, I don't know how it's going to take it. It, no, it just they're, they're not clutching the high torque. You know, they they're all able to control this electronically. So. Everything shifts at the appropriate time. <laughs> but what they're obviously trying to do, you know, the, the key to that thing is that that it can get the range. And <laughs> the only way it's going to get at the range, they're having to reduce every bit of rolling resistance and drag and everything they can to try to get that magical 500 miles of range that they're promising everybody. And so I'm sure that's a lot of where they're getting. It. Once it's up and rolling, they're going to disengage everything they can and cook on as little a power to a single motor, probably that they can to roll the thing down the road. Yeah, but what about the trailer? I mean, they keep talking. Of, it's nice that the tractor park does all this great stuff, but you all these trailers you get, all these wheel bearing, pro, all the problems in, in the trailer, they haven't done anything. They didn't even, they, they even make the point they had no aerodynamic modifications on the trailer. And it's like, God, you're talking about doing all this efficiency stuff to the truck, the tractor, and then you're going to throw it all away in the trailer. Uh, uh, I, you know, surely. Like the benefits of that would be greater in a plaid than on the semi so like if you're going to do it just put it in the model s as well which maybe they'll update and do right fair enough okay that that that's that's good point yeah so just let the one motor do the work even in the plaid uh, even in the s I, I i totally guess i get that and maybe that's what they're going to do i don't know it's just i thought there'd be more bang for the buck uh like you said just keeping the simplicity of the direct drive uh without any kind of uh, shift, uh, mech clutching in or out and focus on the trailer. What what do you do to make the trailer more efficient? Because but well, didn't you won't they be able to choose your trailer though, because you're just going to get whatever the company throws on the back, unless it's a situation like Pepsi. Right. That's where I'm, these initial guys are going to be Pepsi in them. Didn't they mention that though, that they had optimized the box trailer for the truck? I thought well, I they did. They, they are going to, that's right. They did talk about that, but they said for this range test, it was, you know, that was just a straight, it wasn't an optimized, he said no aerodynamic tricks. Like bad hauling jersey barriers. But, you know, I guess that was that rig ride down the road. So yeah, yeah. I'm and, really and, sorry to interrupt and step away, but we just finished putting on a full uh, suspension kit on our Model 3, so we have to go shake it down yeah. before yeah. everything gets too late so i understand kyle thanks thanks everybody. thank you uh, so much kyle for joining for us yeah it's yeah. great to talk uh, with you kyle congratulations 2000 episodes hell yeah enjoy <laughs> yeah. the rest all right thank you right. thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thanks well yeah. i was gonna say I, I knew when we all got together that it would be an entertaining and fun and uh would turn into a longish conversation and i wasn't yeah, worried was about nice. limiting it in any way but we probably should uh since we've been going for uh two hours with 15 hour. minutes short of two hours yes i was gonna say let's go around one more time and and if there's anything else anybody wanted to add on any topic just to make sure everybody got a chance to to say something one more time if i may i had one thought i'd really like to share well, i want to go first sure. <laughs> uh hurts and starting to put evs in the fleet Super stoked every week when I see them at um, the Guardian Angel Apex parking lot there with the food lion. There's always, I would say, what, at least four guys are showing up in the video. I, I really feel like I need a spreadsheet so I can tell which are repeat visitors and which uh, are, are new. But, uh, and I wanted to, to, to uh, Kyle probably didn't see that clip, but, you know, they had the two Konas there last week. And um, 
I want every time a brand new person drives an EV to be a great experience. And I'm convinced that in the Raleigh area, there's enough superchargers that there's no way anyone could rent a car locally or even drive anywhere on the East Coast or into Tennessee or somewhere with a Tesla and not have a place to charge and not have a good experience. Okay. I'm really concerned about the Kona and where are they going to charge and how far are they going to drive and how long are they going to have to wait? And I'm sure it's probably cheaper to rent the Kona than it is to rent the Model Y or the Model 3, which I understand is somewhere close to $300 a day. Gasp. Now, I haven't rented a car in like ever. Don used to rent cars, but it's been 10 years. Um, yeah. so, and IBM was paying. <laughs> so uh, maybe it's been more than 10 years, but you get what I mean. So I just, I just food for thought is like, what is Hertz thinking? Because like even the guys over there at the local Hertz place, I talked to one of them initially and they needed more training on how to charge the Teslas and they have to drive from that location. The nearest set Tesla supercharger is probably 10 miles away. So that's an employee taking a significant amount of time to drive to the supercharger, wait for the car to charge and drive it back. They have no charging in that parking lot whatsoever. I'm waiting for the spot and y'all know it that watch back there where I like to park Ruby for some supercharger or some destination chargers to show up uh, there. I'm sure Tesla hurts the parking lot management people. There's room back there. I think that parking lot can accommodate it. And we did hear just this week Hurt saying something about um, starting to put in some Tesla chargers, uh, which of course, if yeah, they use this, N chargers, yeah, right. superchargers, yeah, if they use this NACS or whatever they're going to do, maybe that'll work for some of these other EVs they plan to have in their fleet. But I wasn't really expecting y'all to say a whole lot back. Just kind of shaking my head because I really want every new EV experience person that experiences to have a great experience, and I'm not, I'm worried. I'm worried yeah. about the Tonas. How, how are they? So I know with when you rent a car from a Tesla from Hearst, you know, you just plug in a supercharger and it's included with, you know, the rental of the car. With all these Electrify America machines and everything, how are they going to do that? Because you need a certain credit card or have an account on your phone to do it. Um, how are they going to be doing that? Then? Yeah, I don't know. It's almost like I... I wish I, it's, it's, this is one of those times I wish I was more assertive than I am and I would just go in there and boldly start demanding answers from the people that hurts about these questions, but I'm a little too shy to, shy to do that. The first time I used my CCS adapter, it took almost 15 minutes for me to, me to figure it out and I knew what I was doing for the most part. Yeah. I, I've, where our, my closest supercharger is, there's EA stations right next to it and you go there and you see people with brand new cars, the, the, ID fours and stuff, they can't get their cars to charge. They, they, they just, they, you know, they, they just can't do it, and they give up when they leave. When I've had, we know people that have bought the cars, and you ask them, and they go, "We can't get it to charge." And I think they have now, but the first couple times, they get frustrated so bad because they can't just walk up and plug it in and work. They've got to do the right, open the app, plug it in, or plug it in, open the app, you know, whatever their the thing is. So people get frustrated with that, and then they're they're not. Not that they're angry, but they are disappointed that, you know, right down the way, Tesla's fly in and out of the supercharger because there's a lot of lift and, you know, it's busy. So people back in, they plug in and they're, it's going. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the yeah. CCS doesn't quite work that way. Yeah. So and I think that's, that's what, along the lines of what Kyle was talking about, but, but that's what will drive some big car manufacturer at some point to go cry uncle and say, yep, Tesla, we want this. You know, we want our customers to be able to pull up, plug in, and go. And, so I did get set up with the, the EVgo. It's it's an automatic thing now. It works like the Tesla. So if you put your, you go to an EVgo setup, put your adapter on, plug in, it works similar to the Tesla now. Where all you do is plug the car in, and it starts within minutes, you know, or a minute. And it's up and yeah. running. So the, the process is working. I have EVgo, but I set it up in the app, and so... Oh, yeah. So once you get a setup and you do it the first time, it actually works pretty well. Both of our cars are set up on it now, so you you can it it, it can work, but it, it shows that the like EVgo had to put some effort into this and actually want to make this work. Yeah, but that's one thing I think Electrify America is not going. They haven't been able to fix almost any of the issues they've they had. They 
and if you go, uh, I, I'm totally positive that they they're, they're interested. But I, you know, my hypothesis or my thinking, my philosophy is, Electrify America is just counting the number of days, baby, till that ten years is up, yeah. and uh, they're gonna sell it off. Uh, they're gonna sell it to whoever wants it. They don't care. I think it's weird if you go to an America charger. There's two handles per box. So when that box goes down and you lose potentially half the system. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen the, the, the memes out there, but like the inside of a Tesla supercharger, how nice and neat it is. And you oh, seen it. American rat's nest. Well, like, I, I think that's the point of their there. design is it's open in the center to show you that there, there really is nothing there. You know, it's got some wire and a contactor and a little board. Yeah. You know, these yeah, new yeah, chargers really. that EA's putting in, we saw one of those opened up. Holy cow, it's more stuff than my elevator takes to run. Yeah. And it's just crazy. All the thing's supposed to be doing is dispensing electricity. I don't know if they get another, you know, motive going on and what they're doing, but they got more going on than what they need to charge for the car. I agree. Well, he'd be, he, Electrify America is just doing the bare minimum to get by and to pull, like you said, the contracts up. And Yeah. Well, what's crazy though is if you look at the boxes they're using, those boxes are extremely complex. For, for a company that is trying to skate by with nothing, they sure are spending a lot of money on a, on a box that does, you know, potentially way more than what they're asking it to do. Right. And I would, but uh, I agree, I, uh, Adam, what you're saying is right. And the, the one thing I throw out there or I would mention, they did it. Electrify America on the East Coast, at least, they literally went by and replaced all the Siemens with ABBs or all the ABs with Siemens. They literally threw away, they had just installed, these things were all less, like a year old or less, and they went out and they just totally redid it. And with total randomness of uh, how they do it, they, they take down the whole site. Kyle liked to had a coronary. You would think you would take down one of the chargers out of sight and replace it, and so they'd have another charger at the site that still worked. But that's not what they did. They just took the whole thing offline. So I... You know, it makes you wonder, what are they thinking? I mean, they, they don't, they just seem to be whatever uh, wild hair gets up their butt. Not they, what's they best for the, the car driver, the user, the real end user. Yeah. They're just thinking about what's best for them. And yeah. yeah, I agree. But, but what Tesla's doing is what only makes sense for something that's going to be deployed mass product, mass on mass like that. It needs to be plug and play. Yeah. You know, it, it needs to be a rack. Unit. If it fails, you don't do anything but pull it out, put a new one in. You can yeah. send it back to a repair center or something to be repaired. But everything in the field needs to be just pull it out and replace it. Yeah, you don't. Even back in my day with IBM, when I was in hardware, I mean, we were we turned we called it we turned into fruit flipper field replaceable unit. Everything was a fruit. You didn't you didn't fix anything. You just replaced the fruit. And you know what was the fruit part number, and, and that's what we did, and and it did that to keep the cost, the number of, you know, how many boxes you could fix in a day, you know, how many customers you could get going. It would save save money. Yeah. Okay, we're good on that one now. So so Adam, anything else that you would like a final thought or topic or something that came to mind that you didn't get to say while we were talking tonight? We didn't even bring up the FSB part. Oh. Right. I do believe that we failed to talk about FSD, although that might be another two hours to, to discussion. But uh, so when are we going to get V11? I didn't know for here, the highway piece, the car runs awesome on the highway. That's the best part about it is road tripping. Yeah. You know, yeah. around town, it's kind of scary. It's Boy. fun. It's yeah. Accelerating, whatever word you want to use. Yeah. But it, it's hard to show, you know, you show people and they're okay with, me running the car on FSD, but if you ask them if they want to do it, they want no, no, they have no interest in that because they just don't want to put the time or effort into it. Yeah. So. Well, for the longest time it was Dawn, but partly because Ruby was so sporadic about giving me the option to engage it and partly, frankly, because I wasn't comfortable. And I would say now that she's consistently working, my comfort level is increasing. I'm finding I'm using it more. Um, I made a comment this past week. I'd like for them to add to the app the percentage use during of drive time for me as a driver, my oh. profile, 
Am I really using it 50% of the time like I think I am? Am I using it more or less? Um, I think that would be easy for them. It would motivate me if it came back and said, God, Marianne, you're only using FSD Autopilot 30% of the time. Honestly, it would, it would motivate me to use it more, I think. So if Elon wants people to use it more because he's it's really safer, it's really safer. <laughs> um, then he he needs to give me some feed, some additional feedback as an end user, I think. But you're right. I would love to have talked about FSD, and um, I don't plan to try to get you guys on uh, soon ish. But like once a quarter or six months, I you may see another invite. Let's get back together again. We don't have to wait two thousand videos. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> to, 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 to chat. Well, and also, it's the time to make sure you do the voice command for ho, 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 right? Right, exactly. Oh, that's yep. right. Yeah. 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 Some of us have already been out there with the reindeer, but I need to definitely do that. Yeah. yeah. So the reindeer and the elves. They've got the elves thing working pretty well. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. People, like people are elves. I still need to come down and go to Guardian Angel. I haven't done that. And that was uh, on my list. You so have I a have standing offer, Jody, to show up any day, yeah. any weekday and go to Guardian Angel with me. I will roll out the red carpet. I will. Yeah. I mean, please, That's anytime. Awesome. And, I would like that and there may be, the there may be a stash of something in my attic waiting <laughs> to give to you. That was procured over many visits to Guardian Angel that I have a special stash for you. So the next time I see you, no no pressure or twisting arms or anything, but hint, hint. Um, it'll be worth your while, I promise. And uh, I see bacon in my future. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bacon, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Bacon. So how about you, David? Anything else you want to add? No, I think I'm... Uh pretty good on that when we come back together for an fsd meeting then i'll have a lot of stuff to add on that but. okay well david is definitely out there uh i won't run it in downtown raleigh i won't i have not once tried to get across town with the beta but but i was with kyle on that and zeb on that original uh original rolled out to the blessed few and that made a large impression on, I can't even get people not to come into my lane for a half a mile in downtown Raleigh. What is Ruby going to do with that? I'm just too scared. I'm just not ready. But David is out there blazing and telling me it's doing great and encouraging me to try it. So I use it every time I go somewhere, even if I know where I'm going, I put the destination in and say drive. And I do it too. I'm 99.9% of the time. I get them. I understand. I think the the more data they get, the better it'll be. Even they took they took away the report button, but you know, the more data they get, the more times they see how many times I'm disengaging, or you know. I don't think the report button's done much for a long time. I think it was just a feel good type thing that made. (laughs) Well, when when that update came out, I actually opened up a request to Tesla. I was like, uh, I don't know if my update is still right. I'm missing the report button. They got back and it's like, it's still recording all the data. You know, they only have, they can turn it on for a select few people now that, you know, I guess like the big YouTube beta testers and stuff like that. But like Black You Tesla mean they thought my hitting the button wasn't useful and they removed it from me? <laughs> How dare they? No, I'm just kidding. Think about what they are. Yeah. Like, you know who that is? That's Ruby. <laughs> But they went from what sixty thousand to three hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah, that's wide open really. So, yeah. I'm not convinced of their ability to machine review their way through all of the feedback that they're getting. So if they shut it off to a, f- a few people, I, I really do understand that. But my offer still stands to Elon and the other people on the autopilot. Uh, you know, please come to the Raleigh area. We've got some really great users here in North Carolina. I'll, you know, pick you out um, a few people and we'll be glad to uh, drive around and help. I mean, I got three or four intersections here, not just Don's left turn where I think it would be useful for them to review it. And not just because I hit some button like, but an engineer and more engineers out in the field in cars with People that are familiar with their town, their road, and their individual driving problems with FSD, then when they bleed a little bit out in the field, sitting beside us in the car or driving with us through the intersections we're having problems on, I really think that might help them over a few hurdles. So, yeah, I, I know there's Chuck's turn now. I have Dave's turn, which is, if, you know, getting going to the target from where by me, 
you got to kind of make a little right, a left, and then a right again with two left turn lanes. You know, it always goes in the wrong one, and then you're trying to cut off traffic. So is that Lynn Road? Good when they fix that. Is that the Lynn Road that? target or North Hills target? North Hills target. So when you're coming off uh, St. Mary Street on the Glenwood, and then you got to go right on the Anderson Road. Okay. It's kind of a weird, funky turn, and I'm waiting for the day that it masters that and gets through that intersection. Well, the supercharger's there, so it really needs to know how to go home. <laughs> right? I mean, it does. All these robo-taxis are going to be pulling up to the supercharger. They're going to need to know. So I just want it to be able to park. I want it, I want it to take me into the parking lot or, and, and park uh, because... You know, and the superchargers, uh, some of those superchargers I took on the Florida trip, I'd never seen them. And I couldn't, I, I could not actually spot them. I had trouble finding them and I had to drive around a couple of times and just spot them. Why didn't no. the car take me right to the, to the. Yeah. No name road everywhere. Yeah, it's exactly. No Why don't you drive me to that supercharger park, pull in, pull in and park. Cause that's, you obviously know you've been, uh, Preconditioning, you know, I'm a, my final destination is still, you know, 500 miles down the road. You can't figure out where the damn supercharger is. Get me in the thing and park. Uh, you know, uh, those little problems like that would be incredible, uh, especially since that's probably like uh, not public. You know, it's not the public roads. You could it could take over. You could say you're in the parking lot at the Target now. Hands off. Drive. It's gonna Take you to the supercharger the rest of the way. You've got off the public highway. You're in private area now. We're, we're in control. Why don't you do that? Uh, please, God, do that. Yeah, I, I agree. trip down through that. Texas last back year. Back from the Florida trip. Right. It was like, where are these superchargers? I'm driving all around the building. And then it's like, yeah. oh, there they are. They're in the corner. Yeah, one of the, one of the advantages of Electrify America, they're like 9, 10 feet, 12 feet tall. The Tesla ones are like five and a half feet. And, I mean, it's easy to miss them across the across the parking lot you you know they don't pull a sign you know at the corners and stuff you know they just absolutely we've only seen two signs of, you know traveling across that's it yeah. two signs. but I, I did want to say this just this past week i do a lot of driving between here in south carolina rural south carolina there are two intersections in south carolina i went through this week with flashing red signs and double huge stop signs, the freaking car drove right through. Wow. And slow down. And I could see it on the screen, two stop signs and flashing lights and FSD blew right through it. Wow. Do you yeah. think it was the flashing lights? I don't know, but it, it's not huge. That's, that's the only thing I can imagine. And, you know, yet you'll come up to an intersection with a... A stop sign. A little twisted, of, yeah. For the other lane, and it'll slam the brakes on. I agree. I could bet you I could take you there right today, and it'll blow right through. I, I have no idea what. You know, and that, that would be a, be a good one to report. <laughs> I can only report, but. Like coming yeah. down, when I came down for you guys on Thanksgiving, you know, and driving down 55, that area where it's like, you know, you have the full left turn U turn lane on 55 there and it's that light, but there's no light for our lanes. It was still like slow down. I was like, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. So. Well, I will conclude with one comment and that is thank you, Mary Ann and Don both. You both have been <laughs> tremendous on. ambassadors to this whole revolution. And I think you've both done a wonderful job oh, and your dedication to Mary and it's been tremendous. If there is if there isn't an award from you two for the, your dedication, there sure as hell ought to be. Oh, well thank I, you, Andy. Yeah. I really appreciate that. And I and I really appreciate the the support of all the guy you guys that came on tonight. Um, you know, just knowing that it touched that it's yeah. meaningful content for some people and people that we are, uh, care about and uh, is, yeah. is really what keeps me going. And, and I appreciate the feedback. And yeah. I'm sure some people will ask, we're probably going like, oh, it's day 2000. Is she going to stop now? Uh, no. no. <laughs> so we're doing a 2000 minute podcast. No, no plans. No plans yeah. to stop. I guess we'll I guess we'll see how life changes when I'm not on the road with Johnny uh, every day for school. But I've kept it up through the summer before. So, you know, it could lead yeah. to more other alternate fun trips that maybe 
even more interesting content. So, um, yeah. yeah. I have no fear that she's going to keep it up. She, <laughs> my girl is creative. She will come up with something. Yeah, we might have, uh, you know, more thrifting throughout the state and other opportunities, I'm sure, would, would come up. But thank you for the support and for being willing to come on today. I was hesitant to ask. I'm very glad that I did and appreciative that you guys would come on. And thank you, Jody, for being on today, too, with Andy, yes, because Jody. I wanted, you know, some female power on today as female, well as the guys. So that that was uh, much appreciated. Yeah, Much appreciated. Huh? What, Andy? I all, oh, our little sweetheart is here. Yes, I put the kitty cat up a minute ago, but I remember our sweetheart. Hi, honey. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another common thread of the channel, lots of pets. That, that's right. And, that's yeah. right. You have to like cats, EVs, cats, dogs, and Legos, and uh, projects. Birds, Pick, pelts, picks or projects. Pelts, all that. That's right. Yeah. All those. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for putting yourself out there and being willing to come on with me and Don today. It it, it meant yeah, a lot. And I really, we, we thank you. Yeah. yeah. Be out there Tuesday sometime, not tomorrow, but Tuesday. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. All Thanks right. so much, everybody. Yeah. Bye-bye.